Thank you, Speaker. I rise on behalf of the Greens in contribution to the Stronger Communities Legislation Amendment Domestic Violence Bill 2020. Uh, the Greens support this bill and its intention, and I acknowledge the Attorney General, his advisers, and the Department for bringing this much needed legislation to the House. It is absolutely my hope that all of us in this place would agree that much more needs to be done to stop the violence against women in our communities and reform the so called justice system. Um, so that we can see justice for women across this state. After close consultation with key stakeholders, particularly Women's Safety New South Wales, Women's Legal Service New South Wales, Domestic Violence New South Wales, uh, my Greens colleague and the domestic violence spokesperson for the Greens in the other place, Abigail Boyd, will be moving a series of amendments to address a number of gaps and shortcomings and, and ways that we can strengthen some of the provisions in this bill. These amendments will be drafted based on evidence, expertise and experiences of those who are working in the sector and are now being looked at in detail by my colleague Abigail Boyd. The detailed and committed work of Hayley Foster and her team at Women's Safety, Karen Willis and her team at Rape and Domestic Violence Services Australia and the teams at DV New South Wales and Women's Legal Service New South Wales have absolutely informed these amendments and I want to give credit to my colleague Abigail Boyd who is currently working through the details of those amendments so that the views and experiences and expertise of the sector can be brought into this place uh, to be able to be considered and I urge the Attorney General to consider these closely and to look at whether or not the government is in a position to be able to support these amendments and I would hope that Labor, the opposition, will also support these amendments so that we can co together collectively be confident that we are doing all that we can do to support victim survivors. As with any moves towards reforming uh, areas around domestic violence, what is most important is the experiences of victim survivors are prioritised in informing legislation and that victim survivors are empowered as much as possible throughout the processes implementing preventative measures, reporting and court proceedings. Any moves to, towards reform in this space must be trauma-informed and protection-based. These principles are at the heart of the Greens' proposed amendments, and we hope that everyone will consider them closely. This bill makes a number of amendments to the Criminal Procedure Act 1986 and the Crimes, Domestic and Personal Violence Act 2007, which have been on the whole well received by organisations and groups in the sector. The bill makes amendments to allow victim survivors of domestic violence to give evidence in a closed court or to utilise a remote audiovisual link or other similar technology or arrangement and to require the court to warn the jury that any delay or absence of a formal complaint of domestic abuse from the victim survivor does not indicate that the allegation is false and for this to be recognised throughout proceedings. These are both significant reforms and as DV advocates and services have indicated will be integral in ensuring that victim survivors feel safe and empowered to use the court process and to go through the court process. 60% of victim survivors surveyed by Women's Safety New South Wales indicated that they had fears or concerns about giving evidence in open court that made them reconsider whether they should attend, to their, attend for their matter. Additionally, 87% of victim survivors identified that the fear of seeing the defendant was a concern which made them reconsider attending court, and 70% reported that fear of seeing the defendant's friends and family was also of great concern. This bill also makes amendments to recognise the link, as we have heard many other members articulate in this place, between domestic violence and animal abuse, and prohibiting the harm or threat of harming of any animal belonging to or in the possession of a victim survivor. This is achieved by amending the definition intimidation to include reference to animals and including it as a mandatory condition under an AVO. It will carry a maximum penalty of five years imprisonment. This is such an important consideration, as there are too many stories that we would have all heard of pets being used to inflict further harm or prevent a victim survivor from leaving the situation. It is absolutely essential that we see this change and I will use this opportunity to once again highlight that restrictions on people being able to have pet pets in rental properties and in strata accommodation further adds to the availability of appropriate accommodation for women and families that are fleeing domestic violence situations and I would urge all of the government members to do whatever they can to make sure that there are no unintended barriers now that we're recognising in legislation the clear link 
between domestic violence and the, the, the misuse and abuse of pets in the context of inflicting that power over victim survivors, that we do all that we can within our housing space to actually make changes to ensure that pets are not banned from rental properties or banned from strata properties, which in, in effect adds to the level of pressures in terms of being able to find alternative accommodation for people that are trying to escape domestic violence situations. The bill makes also several amendments in regard to apprehended domestic violence orders, introducing provisions so that if an ADVO is ordered against a perpetrator who is imprisoned, that it will remain in place for the duration of the sentence and for at least two years after. To allow for provisional ADVOs to be properly enforced, applied and amended as required by police, to allow the court to be able to grant leave to the person against whom the ADVO is made for an application to vary or revoke, uh, on the grounds that either there has been a significant change in circumstance since the relevant order was made or that it is in the interest of justice to do so. And also to ensure that a failure to comply with the requirement to list a provisional ADVO for court consideration within 28 days does not invalidate the provisional order. The Greens strongly support these important measures. We particularly note the introduction of closed courts when domestic violence victim survivors are giving evidence and the ability to appear by audiovisual links will be groundbreaking in the way that domestic and family violence are able to deal with these matters in the court. It will certainly provide stronger support to victim survivors and build trust within the institution of the courts and more widely within the criminal justice system. And while this is extremely encouraging, it's important to note that there are still key reforms that do need urgent attention. And that even though we welcome all of the measures put forward in this bill, that there are actually immediate additional uh, changes that could be implemented through the passage of this legislation. And I would hope that those looking closely at the Greens amendments moved by my colleague Abigail Boyd in the other place will mean that we pass the strongest leg legislation that we can. There is still so much that can be done to ensure that domestic and family violence is effectively dealt with in our laws and in our court procedures, particularly when it comes to recognising coercive control as an important precursor to physical violence. Yes, we need legislative reforms, but not just legislative reforms. We need systemic change across our community. Across our justice system, we need change. With frontline services, particularly with police, we need change. With dealing with inequalities still faced by women in society, we need action. But we also need to recognise the urgency of this problem. Until we do that, our status as women and our ability to participate fully in society will always be limited. It is of paramount importance that along those lines, domestic and family violence services are funded adequately in order to provide the crucial support for victim survivors and the services that offer their the support around them. I encourage the government and the Attorney General to ensure that this funding is given the priority that it needs, because those working in the services and support organisations and advocacy organisations need the resources to be able to deliver on the crucial work that they do. I urge everybody to look closely at the Greens amendments in the other place and I commend the work of all of the services and organisations that have done the hard yards to get us to a point where we're seeing this type of legislation and hope that we see support for the Greens amendments in the other place to make sure that it is strong as it can be for our communities.